sports fans and baseball fans, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and today I am here with Digital Diamond Baseball, and we are going to do a game from one of my favorite baseball decades, the 80s, 1980 to be exact, we are going to play the 1980 Boston Red Sox against the 1980 Detroit Tigers. Uh, I will be controlling Boston, and uh, the pitchers today, as you can see on the screen, will be Bob Stanley for the Red Sox, and Dan Schatzeter will be pitching for Detroit. So we will go to set the lineups, and really I'm just going to use the uh, lineup that they give me. And, uh, yeah, I guess we're just going to say play ball. So, yep, setting the stage here. You can see we've got the uh, stadium up and we are ready to go. And uh, the uh, batter, the first batter will be Dwight Dewey Evans. And he is going to be out. So that brings up Rick Burleson is the next batter, and he will be out. So there's two down quickly here. And uh, uh, who is that T. Perez? Is that is that Tony Perez? I don't remember him being on the Red Sox, but maybe he was. Anyway, uh, we went one, two, three there. So now Bob Stanley is pitching to R. Peters. I do not know who R. Peters is. Uh, the name is not familiar. Sorry. And he's going to be out. That brings up one of my favorite all-time players, John Wackenfuss. And John Wackenfuss is going to be out. And so with two down, we're going to Steve Kemp. I always loved Steve Kemp. Steve Kemp was one of my favorites. Let's see what he does. He is going to strike out. And so we are 0-0 zero, zero after one. And we are in the top of the second. And this is going to be Jim Rice. And Jim Rice is going to be out. Which brings up Carlton Fisk again, one of my favorites. Obviously, he played for the White Sox. And it looks like he's going downtown. And it is. The Boston Red Sox are on the board here. Oh, wait. I thought there was somebody else got out. So he, apparently he had a two-run homer. I thought that, uh, all right. I mean, I'm looking right here. I don't know, you know. So, anyway, that looks like it's a strikeout for um, Glenn Hoffman, and uh, that brings up Freddie Lynn. Freddie Lynn, and Freddie Lynn is going to walk, it looks like, yeah. So, uh, or Hoffman. Wait. How is that Hoffman? All right, I don't know. Uh, I could have sworn that it was Lynn that was up, but I guess Lynn is up right now. Hoffman got the walk, and it looks like he's going to strike out, Lynn will. So, Boston comes away with two, though. As we go to the bottom of the second inning, with Boston up 2 nothing on a two-run Carlton Fisk homer. Um, oh, wait a minute. No, no we're not out yet. I... I uh, it's I this game I don't know it's hard for me to keep track of what's going on now that is an out right okay so now we're in the field all right it's easier to keep track of what's going on I'll tell you that in, in the Stratomatic and out of the park computer games but anyway now we are apparently back in the field still with only that two run lead uh, in the bottom of the second and Alan Trammell is the batter. Bob Stanley is pitching. I'll look at the field now. I mean, 
because I, I apparently looking at this grid isn't really helping me. Like Trammel just got aboard, so Trammel's on. There are no outs, and uh, Lynn Jones is the batter. And that looks like it's going to be a single. So, Lynn Jones, that's a one base single. So, you got Jones at first and Trammell at second with nobody out. And Champ Summers, he was another one. He had a great 1979 card, let me tell you that. Um, and this looks like it's going to be gone. Yeah. Looks as if he just hit a three-run home run and gave Detroit the lead. Which brings up Lance Perry. You know what? Looking at the field, I think, is a lot more indicative of what it indicates to me what's going on a lot better than just looking at that grid. So that is an out. So there's one down. And uh, we've got Tom Brookins. Everybody remembers Tom Brookins, don't you? And he's going to hit a single. So Bob Stanley is getting his ass handed to him right now. Brookins is at first. There's only one down. And Mark Wagner is the batter. I do remember Mark Wagner. And what do we got here? He's bunting. And he does bunt Brookins over. But the sacrifice causes the second out of the inning. And so now you got Brookins at second with two down, and the top of the order, R. Peters is up. And it looks like he's going to be out. And he is out. And so um, the Detroit Tigers came up with three in the second inning, and they're ahead three to two. As we go to the top of the third, and the batter is Dwight Dewey Evans against Schatzeter. Schatzeter's still out there, and, you know, why not? He's winning right now. Um, that is going to be an out. And brings up Rick Burleson, the shortstop, for the 1980 Red Sox. And it looks like he's going to get a home run. Did Rick Burleson hit home runs? All right. I guess he did. And he just did here and tied the game. So it's three all, and uh, Tony Perez is up. And it appears he's going to strike out. And he will give way to Jim Rice. Jim Rice, the left fielder, is going to be out. And so now Detroit is up, but we're in a tie game. We're in a close game here between the 1980 Tigers and the 1980 Red Sox with John Wackenfuss taking the, uh, going up to the plate against Bob Stanley. Now, I'm going to tell you that when I need to make a pitching change, and I probably will need to do that, um, the, uh, I, I it's, uh, I don't, I don't play this game very often, and I know that it's a little kind of uh, a complicated process, potentially, to get to uh, where you uh, can make the pitching change so and how you do it. So I'm going to do my best with that. We'll figure it out when the time comes. Uh, but there are there is one out with Kemp aboard at first base and Trammel up. So, as you can well guess, if I can get Stanley through the entire game, I'm going to do that. And that appears as though it's an out. And so there will be two down with uh, Kemp at first and Lynn Jones is the batter. And that is, now I think, if I remember correctly, you click on the player, and then from there there's a, a sequence of things that you do to replace him. The pitcher in this case, because I'm not going to, I don't plan on repla re replacing any of the uh, position players. 
Carlton Fisk is up. We are in a 3-3 game in the top of the fourth inning between the 1980 Red Sox and the 1980 Detroit Tigers. And that is going to be one down and uh, given way to the catcher, Gary, or no, the DH, Gary Allenson. Fisk is the catcher. And that's going to be two down, and now Hoffman is the batter, Glenn Hoffman, who is the brother of Trevor Hoffman. And that is going to be, Hoffman is on again. That's the second time Hoffman's been aboard. He's at first with Fred Freddie Lynn up. And Fred Lynn looks like he's going to hit a single. And I'm I'm going to attempt to make the uh, the extra base and it does work. So, we have runners at the corners and Jerry Remy, the second baseman is up. And he's out. So we didn't get any runs. We're going to the bottom of the fourth. With Stanley still pitching in a 3-3 game. And that's going to be a single for Champ Summers. Bringing up Lance Parrish, the catcher. And Lance Parrish is going to get a single himself. And it's a one base single, so you got two runners on with nobody out. And Tom Brookins is the batter. I think that time that I'm going to have to think about replacing Stanley is coming very quickly. That is going to be a single, hopefully just a one base single. And it is, or no, it isn't. No, it's a two-base single, so another run scores for Detroit. And that brings Mark Wagner to the plate. Mark Wagner, from what I remember, not a very good uh, hitter. Really nothing very notable at all about him. He is out, and uh, nobody advances. So there's one down with runners at second and third, and Detroit ahead here 4-3. And that's going to be a strikeout, which definitely um, he needed. Uh, Stanley needed that badly. So there's two down, runners at second and third, and um, John Wackenfuss is at the plate. John Wackenfuss now was a good player. He was a good, good hitter, and he could get on base. Here he is out, and we do get out of the inning without any further damage. But we are losing 4-3 here in the top of the fifth inning with Dwight Evans up. So we got to get this offense has to start getting something done against uh, Schatzeter. But he flies out to Kemp, so there's one down. And Burleson is the batter. And it looks like he's going to be out too. He flies out to Lynn Jones for the second out. Which brings to the plate Perez. And Perez is going to be out. So Detroit is back at the plate um, trying to assault Stanley further. And uh, Steve Kemp will be the first batter he will face here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And that's going to be an out. Out to Stanley. So Stanley makes the play. Trammell is the batter with one down. And that is going to also be an out. So there's two down. Burleson making that play. And uh, with two down and nobody on, Lynn Jones is the batter. And Lynn Jones will be out as well. So we got a close one here. Detroit is ahead. The 1980 Detroit Tigers are ahead of the 1980 Red Sox by the score of 4-3. And, um, no, okay, that's only two outs, and Champ Summers is, okay, Trammell got on. Somehow Trammell got on, even though that grid said he was out. 
again, I got to look at the field, I suppose. So now they are out, and we are in the top of the sixth. So, and again, I don't play this game very often, so it's, uh, you know, kind of, you know, um, feeling my way here, figuring out what's really going on. So now the grid says there's a single, and apparently there is. Jim Rice is aboard with a hit. And uh, that gives way to Carlton Fisk. And Carlton Fisk is going to be out. Trammell will make the play. And in fact, he makes a double play. And there are two down with Gary Allenson, the DH, at the plate. And he's going to walk. So Gary Allenson's aboard now with two out. And Glenn Hoffman, the batter. This Boston lineup, really, I'm not that impressed with it. And he uh, is out to Wagner. And so we're going to the bottom of the sixth. Still a very good game. It's 4-3. to three. Detroit ahead. The 1980 Detroit Tigers beating the 1980 Red Sox currently 4-3. to three. And there is a walk. Parrish is aboard with a walk. Brookins is the batter. And uh, that is going to be an out. Hoffman will make the play. Is it a double play? No, it is not. It is. A, it looks like it's a fielder's choice. So there's one down. Parrish is at first. Wagner is the batter. Again, Wagner, not a great batter. He is the ninth hitter in this lineup, in this Detroit lineup, after all. And what just happened there? Okay, I don't know, but it looks like there's two down with Wagner up. Maybe he tried to steal, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Wagner is the batter, and he is going to hit a single. He hits a single to center field, and our Peters is the batter. And he is going to be out. Out to center field. Fred Lynn makes the play, and Fred Lynn is the first batter of the top of the seventh inning. Again, in a 4-3 game, I probably should have played a game to learn how to play this, but Lynn is aboard. So we got Lynn aboard. Jerry Remy is the batter. I am going to try to bunt. And let's see if that worked. It did. Lynn goes to second, and there is one out. And so now we have Daryl Evans. Or not Daryl Evans, Dwight Evans. Daryl Evans was another good guy that played in the 80s. But Dwight Evans is out, and so there's two down. And Rick Burleson is the batter. And Rick Burleson is going to hit a home run. Are you kidding me? Is that really what happened? It is indeed what happened. It's a two-run home run for Rick Burleson. The unexpected players are, are really the, the stars in this game. So now Boston is ahead 5-4 with two down here and Perez the batter. And he's going to be out. So we're going to try to get um, Stanley through at least the seventh here. Walk and Fuss is the batter that he's going to face to lead off the bottom of the seventh. But he's going to hit a double. A double to right field. Evans plays the ball in. And uh, Steve Kemp is a batter. Again, Steve Kemp, another good hitter. This Tigers lineup is pretty formidable, I have to say. Um, and that is going to be a single that's going to put runners at the corner. So I should not probably have even thought about sending... Um, and Stanley back out there, but I did. And uh, we're going to hope for a double play here with Trammell up. And he is going to be out to Burleson. Is it a double play? It is indeed a double play, but... Detroit scores the tying run. It's 5-5. I'm definitely going to need a reliever. And um, 
Lynn Jones is the batter. So, Lynn Jones is out. And that puts us at the plate here in the eighth inning. And uh, we do have a new pitcher for Detroit. I, I'm not sure if this is the first time he's appearing, but it is Pat Underwood. So, Pat Underwood will deal to Rice. And Rice is going to hit a single. Single pass shortstop. So, he's aboard. The meat of the order, the meat of the Boston order here. Carlton Fisk is the batter. And he's going to hit a single as well. There's two runners on with nobody out here. And Gary Allenson, the DH. I'm going to guess you don't want to bunt with Gary Allenson. So we're just going to let him hit. But he's going to strike out. He strikes out for the first out of the Boston 8th. And... Uh, Glenn Hoffman, now Glenn Hoffman has hit a home run this game. Maybe even two, but here he is out. And that is going to give way to Freddie Lynn. Two runners on, two men down. Fred Lynn, good hitter, but he strikes out. All right, so we are in the bottom of the eighth, and I am going to... Look at making the change. Now, I did click on him, so that was exactly what I needed to do. And uh, let's see who we're going to bring in. I'm going to bring in Dick Drago. So, let's see here. I think what happens is I click on him and I... Oh, wait a minute. I click on Pitcher and then I... Put in Drago. So let's see. Yes, I think I I think I did that. Uh okay, so let's see here. No, I don't, I don't, maybe I didn't do that. All right, let's hit OK. Yes, okay, I did do it. All right, so Dick Drago is now out there, and he is going to deal to Champ Summers. Here in a tie game in the bottom of the eight between the 1980 Tigers and the 1980 Red Sox. And that is a strikeout. So the next batter is Lance Parrish, another good hitter, another real good hitter in this Detroit lineup. And he's going to hit a triple. Do you believe that? Lance Parrish with a triple? I'm going to play the infield back and hope that this Boston... Well, first of all, hope that we can get the out that we need to keep Parrish at second. The type of out. We cannot. It's actually a home run for Tom Brookins. So Dick Drago gets victimized by a two-run home run that puts Detroit ahead by the score of 7-5 to five here in the bottom of the eight. And then a Mark Wagner is the batter. There's one out, so I expect this to be the second out. And it is. Mark Wagner is out. And that brings up Peters. And Peters is going to walk. Peters walks and walk and fusses the batter. With two down. Here in the bottom of the eighth. 
Who would have thought that bringing in Dick Drago was a bad idea? Because really, he is getting he's getting his ass handed to him. And Steve Kemp is a batter with two Detroit uh, Tigers on base and two down. And that's going to be a single. Let's see if they send him send the runner. They did, and so now Detroit takes a three run lead. They are up eight to five. Drago just really not. He didn't have it today. And there's a home run. Unreal. Alan Trammell hitting a home run. <laughs> well, this game is now officially out of reach. It was a very good game up until now, up until Dick Drago hit the mound. Um, I don't know. Now, I don't know if I was supposed to warm him up either. I don't know because, like, in I know in Stratomatic Baseball, Computer Baseball, you don't have to do that. Um, so maybe that was the problem. That could possibly have been the problem. Let me know in the comments if that's uh, where I made my mistake or whether you think Drago just had a bad day. Um, Underwood is going to deal to Remy. He's the first batter. And Remy walks. Now, I am down by, uh, what is it, six runs. I'm down by six runs. I mean, that's crazy. Um... So, Remy on board, and the batter is Dwight Evans. And Dwight Evans is going to hit a single. So, let's see if Boston can come back. I mean, six runs is a tall order, though. If it had just been that, like, initial two runs or whatever that it scored, I would have said, okay, yeah, you know. But that's going to be a strikeout, so there's one down. And uh, Perez is the batter. Perez hits a home run, though. Perez is bringing us closer. So, yeah, there's going to be a three spot right there for Boston, and it is 11-8. to eight. We're only down by three with only one out, and Jim Rice is the batter, and now they bring in Aurelio Lopez, senior smoke, comes on, and he does smoke the batter, Jim Rice. And there's a strikeout, so there's two down. And Carlton Fisk is up. The, the, he's the last hope for Boston. And that is going to be an out. So, that is your score. Let's see. Um, we'll go to the box score. And here is the box score. There's what the Boston Red Sox did. Let's look up Hoffman. Hoffman was one for three with that home run, and he also walked. And uh, home runs were hit by Burleson. Uh, Burleson had two. Burleson had two home runs. Home runs were hit by Burleson, Perez. Oh, no, I guess uh, Hoffman didn't hit one. I was thinking he hit one. He did have an RBI, though. Burleson, Perez, and Fisk had homers. Uh, for Detroit, you can see all of this action. They were just really on top of their game offensively. Stanley went seven. He allowed 11 hits, though, in four runs before I relieved him. And then Drago came in and just uh, crapped the bed. He pitched one inning, allowed six runs. Again, maybe because I didn't warm him up. That's possible. Uh, but that is going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.